عمر هيكلمنا عن indication of cardiac resynchronization in plant of cardiac vector defibrillator therapy اتفضل دكتور عمر شكرا دكتور ميرفت شكرا دكتور عمر محاضره جميله احنا المحاضره indications of CRT and ICD therapy دي الالمس بتاعتنا احنا CRT indications عن السمة ل indications in heart failure management و indications in bradycardia pacing طبعا ده الالجوريزم الشهير بتاع الثيرابي بتاع الهارت فيلير سيمتوماتيك بيشنتس في هارت فيلير ريديوس ايجكشن فراكشن هيف هيف بيتيب اس ان ايبتر بيتا بلوكرز وكالو سيمتوماتيك ام ام ار ان ام ار اي ميناكروتيكو ريسبتور انتاجونيست وبعد كده لو سيمتوماتيك عندنا ال ال اللي هو انتريستو والارني وهنا يجي دور سي ار تي في ساينس ريزم كيو اس ديوريشن 130 او اكثر ميلي سكندز فهو ده الرول بتاع السي ار تي في الهارت فيلر الجوريزم وهنا الديفيبليشن او الاي سي دي لو الانجكشن فراكشن اقل من 35% زي الـ زي الاي سي دي برضه ديسبايت اوبتيم ميديكال ثيرابي فور 3 مانثز ماشي اور هيستوري اوف سيمبتوماتيك في تي في اف هيستوري اوف سيمبتوماتيك في تي في اف ده اللي هو السكندري بريفنشن اللي هنقوله بعدين في اخر المحاضره فدي ده الانديكيشن ده المكان الاي سي دي وده مكان السي ار تي والسي ار تي دي برضه لان هم في اوفرلاب كبير قوي ما بين الانديكيشنز بتاعتهم او الشروط بتاعتهم. دي ده هي السي جايد لاينز 2016 اللي كانت حصل فيها ابديت للسي ار تي انديكيشنز وهنا كاتبين هو ريكومندد فور سيمبتوماتيك بيشنتس وذ هارت فيلير سيمبتوماتيك من نيا كلاس 2 نيا كلاس 3 وامبولاتري كلاس 4. In sinus rhythm, QRS duration 150 or more milliseconds, left bundle branch block morphology, ejection fraction 35 or less, despite optical medical therapy for three months to improve symptoms and reduce morbidity and mortality. We don't just reduce the symptoms, we also reduce the morbidity and mortality. The talk about class one. ديفيد انز اي واحنا هنتكلم على جزء من الاي اللي قالوا الايفيدنس اي احنا هنا طبعا الاوبتيمال ثيرابي ثلاث شهور وبعد كده بنعيد ثاني الايكو عشان نشوف الاجكشن فراكشن هل اتحسن ولا لا عشان نستابلش انديكيشن بتاع الديفايس ثيرابي في هارت فيلد بعد كده لو هي نون ليفت باند برانش بلوك مورفولوجي ساعتها هتبقى كلاس 2 اي بنفس الشروط هتبقى كلاس 2 اي لو هي من 130 149 برضه بنفس الشروط هتبقى ليفت باندل هتبقى كلاس 1 لو 130 ل 149 نون ليفت باندل هتبقى كلاس 2 بي الرقم قبل كده كان 120 في الجايد لاينز القديمه 2013 بس رقم زاد ل 130 بقيت ده في ده في هارت فيلير في لو السي ار تي راذر ذان ار في بيسنج ريكومندد فور هارت فيلير بيشنس ريدكشن فراكشن ريجاردلس اوف نيا كلاس لو في انديكيشن لفنتريكولار بيسنج يعني فور براديكارديا بيسنج وده مالوش مالوش علاقه بالنيا كلاس ومالوش يعني هيبقى انديكيتد وانس ان في انديكيشن للبراديكارديا وفي وفي ريديوس ريجكشن فراكشن بعد كده هنا برضو السي ار بي شود بي كونسيدرد في لو ليفت ريجكشن فراكشن 35 او اقل كلاس 3 امبارح كلاس 4 نسبات اوبتيم ميديكال ثيرابي ولو البيشنت في انتر فيبريليشن و تو انشور ان باي فيتيكولار كابتشر از بريزنت ولو باي فيتيكولار كابتشر مش كان بي اشيفد والريت هارت ريت كان بي كنترول باي ميديكيشنز ساعتها يجي رول اوف ايفينود ابليشن و 
CRT. With CRT is contraindication, uh, contraindicated ALMEO 30 millisecond uh, class 3. The clinical trials I'm talking about are early trials, MASTIC and MIRACLE, and CARE Heart Failure Companion. The first uh, trial um, de conducted in Europe, uh, uh, multi site stimulation in cardiomyopathies, or MASTIC study uh, 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 titled Effects of Multi Site Biventricular Pacing in Patients with Heart Failure and uh, Intraventricular Conduction Delay. Uh, we can it tell the study of 2001. Adam uh, Tineya to randomize uh, patients um, uh, into uh, three months of pacing and three months of, of non pacing and uh, cross over between the two groups. So it started uh, two, two arms, uh, one arm. Uh, uh, both implanted pacemakers, uh, but one arm uh, is a pacemaker is kept at 40 different minutes, that's the backup, uh, um, and the other arm is pacing. After three months, they switch uh, the patients who are active, uh, it, it, uh, the, the pacemaker become backup and, and the vice versa in the other arm to see uh, the uh, results in both. And the, uh, the uh, characteristics of the study population, uh, it, it was around uh, 60 years, um, uh, weight around 80 um, the, the, uh, in uh, kilograms. Um, here the heart rate was 75 plus minus, that's controlled uh, on medical treatment. Uh, left, left, uh, the QRS duration was um, around 170. This was early studies, so it was uh, um, uh, in the conduction delay that signifies this synchrony. And left uh, bond branch block in 87% of patients. Uh, left ventricular injection fraction again 23% plus minus. And um, uh, this is uh, uh, the results. Uh, uh, here's the results or endpoints where symptomatic improvement and quality of life. So. Uh, symptom, symptom improvement was uh, in the, uh, uh, measured in the form of the six-minute talk test. And uh, in the active pacing group, uh, the uh, patients can uh, uh, walk uh, more than the inactive. So uh, this reflects that symptoms is better than in the pacing group. And this uh, um, uh, uh, graphs showing uh, the uh, the study timeline, which uh, um, here both arms uh, crossed over, and we notice that uh, during uh, the active pacing, uh, the the distance the six point four test is is better, and the quality quality of life is better. And uh, uh, here the conclusion was um, uh, uh, intraventricular pacing significantly improves exercise tolerance and quality of life in patients with chronic heart failure and intraventricular conduction delay. Of course, it was then technical complex and this study looked at the symptoms but didn't address the mortality. So um, if you remember uh, when we are reading the guidelines yeah, to reduce symptoms, this is the first uh, 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 um, benefit we gain from uh, CRT from these early studies. Uh, the second study was um, the miracle study uh, uh, titled uh, cardiac synchronization and chronic heart failure. And again, the, this was similar. Uh, uh, it, it was near class three, around 90% of patients. Uh, QRS duration was, was uh, one, 160. Um, ejection fraction again was around 21 plus minus. So um, again, uh, uh, this study uh, looked at uh, change in six minute walking uh, distance uh, and, uh, and the quality of life. And it proved that compared to medical treatment uh, only, uh, pacing has better uh, effects in this. Uh, and the um, Meyer estimates uh, for a time uh, to, uh, to, to death or hospitalization uh, for, for worsening heart failure was better in the uh, uh, CRT group versus a control group. And uh, from this uh, study, 
uh, they concluded that uh, uh, cardiac resynchronization results in significant clinical improvement in patients uh, with moderate to severe heart failure and intraventricular conduction delay, and this supported the previous study. Uh, then, uh, um, this study again uh, was conducted in Europe. Uh, the effect of cardiac risk synchronization on, uh, on morbidity and mortality in heart failure. This was in uh, 2005. Uh, this is a care heart failure uh, study. And uh, um, as you see, this study is now looking at the morbidity and mortality. So, this is looking at the mortality endpoint. Uh, and um, uh, again, the, um, uh, the, uh, they looked at patients with NEHA, uh, um, could NEHA class 4, ambulatory class 4, um, uh, with percents of patients, but, but the majority was NEHA class 3. Again, uh, some patients with dilated cardiomyopathy, not only ischemic. Um, uh, the left ventricular ejection fraction, uh, the median was 25. And uh, the QRS duration here was again 160 uh, millisecond. And with uh, controlled on medical treatment uh, on uh, guideline uh, uh, um, advised medical treatment. And uh, these are uh, the survival curves for all, uh, here. Uh, this, uh, uh, this A, plot A, is the um, uh, primary end point. Uh, and uh, uh, this included uh, uh, death from any cause or unplanned hospitalization for a major cardiovascular event. So uh, this is looking at two, uh, two endpoints combined. Uh, and um, uh, it showed after um, around uh, three years that... Uh, um, Cardiac resynchronization is uh, better significantly than medical treatment, and this um, uh, this graph uh, depicts only the uh, de death from any cause. So uh, th this was death from any cause, and this was death from any cause plus uh, unplanned hospitalization. Uh, so uh, the uh, the CRT therapy reduced the hospitalization of cardi cardiovascular events and reduced the um, death for, uh, for many causes, all cause mortality. And again, the hemodynamic effects uh, was only, uh, was again reduced, the stored blood pressure was increased. Uh, uh, this was three months, uh, this at uh, 18 months. Um, uh, the uh, the interventricular mechanical delay was reduced, the ejection fraction increased and um, uh, the BNP, BNP uh, uh, improved, price improved. And I, uh, this uh, plot to um, uh, say the serious side effects uh, then of the uh, procedure related uh, that was um, in the CRT group in, composed of lead displacement, uh, chronic sinus dissection, uh, pocket erosion, pneumothorax, and uh, device-related infection. So this was Again, cost of uh, this uh, uh, early uh, treatment, and this, we, this uh, important uh, complications that we have to bear in mind in order to um, give patient benefit and avoid uh, uh, avoid uh, these risks. Conclusions were that in patients with heart failure and cardiac dyssynchrony, cardiac resynchronization improves symptoms and the quality of life, um, and reduce complications and the risk of death. Um, uh, so, um, the implantation of cardiac synchronization device should be routinely cons considered in such patients. This was uh, the um, uh, um, uh, conclusions of this study, and this study had two, uh, two uh, follow-up long-term for this study, the long-term effects of the care heart failure trial. And uh, this at, uh, again showed that uh, uh, CRT uh, Deaths are less than uh, medical therapy only uh, deaths. Uh, and uh, again, a worsening heart failure and sudden death decrease in the CRT uh, group. And um, I conclude that benefits of CRT observed in the main trial persist or increased in longer follow up 
uh, reduction in mortality um, was due to uh, fewer deaths, both from wor worsening heart failure and from sudden death. Uh, and so, so uh, this reduction in mortality uh, um, uh, improved the position of the CRT in the guidelines. And again, the lo long term, the eight years follow up of, uh, uh, of this trial, clear heart failure trial published in the European Journal of Heart Failure. Uh, again, um, uh, um, showed that uh, most patients uh, reversed, uh, uh, crossed over into the device uh, uh, for most patients after the study was completed and established benefit of CRT. Most patients of the medical treatment only arm uh, had a device. So if you see here, percent of control group survivors in follow up with a device increased up to 90, above 90%. And uh, again, long-term follow-up uh, showed that the effect of CRT on mortality observed during the, uh, the main trial uh, persisted uh, the higher rate of CRT device implantation in the control group after completion of the randomized phase of the study may have prevented further diversion of the survival case. Curves, due to a huge amount of crossover. And uh, here, uh, this study uh, uh, is a companion study was done in the US. So the, um, uh, this comparison of medical therapy, uh, pacing, and defibrillation heart failure, a companion study, and um, this is in uh, 2004. Um, and again, um, it, it showed similar uh, uh, baseline characteristics to the previous studies. And here, um, the primary endpoint was a, a, a death uh, from uh, um, or hospitalization from any cause. And uh, it's uh, here the uh, the black arm, um, the black arm uh, is the um, uh, pacemaker defibrillator, that's the CRTD. Uh, and the gray arm is the pacemaker, this is the CRP, CRTP, and this is the pharmacological uh, therapy. And showed that uh, both CR, uh, CRTD and CRTP uh, were better than medical treatment, but they are they were almost uh, uh, the same. Uh, and these uh, other curve for second end points for hospitalization for cardiovascular cause and hospitalization for heart failure. Again, it was better in the uh, PACE group. Uh, uh, and it concluded that patients with advanced heart failure and prolonged QIS interval cardiac risk and cardiac therapy decreased the combined risk of uh, death from any cause or first hospitalization. And when combined with a implantable defibrillator, significantly reduce mortality. And uh, uh, this last thing, a meta-analysis uh, was done, um, uh, individual patient meta-analysis of five randomized trials assessing the patient, the effect of uh, uh, CRT on mobility and mortality, in patients with symptomatic heart failure, and um, it included uh, 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 3,800 patients randomized uh, two groups, and uh, this included other trials, care fear and other uh, trials. Um, uh, and um, again, uh, 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 follow-up months was up to, uh, up to more than two years. It showed the effect of, uh, the favorable effect of um, uh, CRT, uh, uh, P or CRTD. Uh, compared to uh, optical medical therapy. Um, and uh, uh, here is a graph again to uh, showing the QRS duration that uh, um, uh, where benefit occurs. This is hazard ratio for CRT. Uh, so uh, uh, below hazard ratio, uh, this improvement. So this, uh, again, this uh, limit for the uh, QRS duration was at one, about 130 um, milliseconds. And uh, it indicates that QRS duration is a powerful predictor of the effects of CRT on mobility and mortality in patients with some heart failure and uh, left ventricular storage function who are in sinus rhythm. Uh, QRS morphology did not provide additional information after clinical response, about clinical response. So the QRS duration was um, uh, powerful compared to uh, QRS morphology according to this analysis. And from the guidelines, we know that uh, the responders for CRT better with wider QRS, left bundle, 
uh, females and non-ischemic cardiomyopathies, and uh, the reverse are um, less responders. That's why the guidelines uh, limit uh, the, uh, the rules or the conditions for these uh, for these elements. Uh, and uh, we said this uh, uh, before uh, that uh, uh, in heart failure, gestation friction, and uncontrollable heart rate, we can proceed to uh, ablation CRT. And um, if we can't control the, um, the heart failure medications. Okay. And um, uh, the, uh, the upgrade. Uh, from conventional pacemaker or ICD is indicated in patients with heart failure uh, and high percentage of ventricular pacing is class one uh, in, um, in near class uh, ambulatory class four. Uh, despite adequate medical therapy, we uh, de novo implantation uh, 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 in heart failure patient reduced friction fraction that require uh, um, high percentage of ventricular pacing. Uh, uh, for difference between CRTD and CRTP, um, uh, uh, here in primary prevention, uh, the, the mortality reduction is similar between both, um, but slightly better in CRTD. Uh, complications uh, uh, and costs, according to studies, are, are higher in the CRTD, but uh, uh, the CRTD um, is favored in if the patient have life expectancy after uh, for more than one year in stable patient near class two, um, in ischemic heart disease patients, uh, and a lack of comorbidities. Um, uh, if if, uh, if uh, patient has, is frail or have uh, other conditions, uh, this uh, points out from the CRTD. And in, uh, in, uh, in arrhythmia, uh, the um, a mode of control of arrhythmia and, uh, um, and CRTD if we can't control the heart rate like multifocal atrial tachycardia. So here, um, uh, if you know ablation followed by pacing, prefer preferable by ventricular or responder pacing. Um, uh, this in, again in macroentent atrial arrhythmias, uh, that's ablate and pace. Um, uh, and if, if we can't control the arrhythmia, um, and if uh, the patient has uh, um, cardiomyopathy, uh, uh, cardiac uh, arrhythmia-related cardiomyopathy. Uh, in uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, cardiac risk condition therapy to improve symptoms may be considered in patients with who come uh, uh, maximum gradient less than 30%. Uh, uh, this is important to not to uh, increase the gradient. And dark refractory uh, uh, symptoms and uh, ejection fraction less than 50% uh, and left mountain uh, branch block um, morphology. Uh, and again, in atrial fibrillation, as we uh, said, uh, we can do go for a bit and pace if we can't control the rate. Uh, I, this I see the indications. Uh, we, um, uh, it's classified into primary prevention and secondary prevention. Secondary prevention uh, is patient who had a resuscitated uh, uh, cardiac arrest uh, or uh, hemodynamically unstable uh, VT, uh, VT, and uh, this indicated to uh, as ICD plus one. At least in all uh, disease, if patient has life expectancy more than one uh, year and is uh, properly counseled about the benefits of. Uh, the device and the uh, drawbacks that he, uh, that he may get. Primary prevention, this um, uh, we judge uh, 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 according to uh, the patient uh, clinical uh, parameters and sometimes in some disease there is uh, risk scores that uh, sums up the parameters. So um, we'll talk about uh, the heart failure first. Um, uh, this um, uh, uh, this is imp uh, this is uh, the therapy that uh, pre pre uh, uh, precede onset of symptoms. So this is the measures that we uh, take in uh, patients with uh, heart failure that, that they are asymptomatic or before onset of symptoms to prevent sudden death. And here the ICD indication 
uh, in patients that are asymptomatic, uh, uh, but with reduced ejection fraction. Uh, um, here's uh, the cutoff, the early ejection fraction is 30% or less. And this in the, uh, in the ischemic uh, origin and the uh, non-ischemic origin. And um, of course, the ischemic origin after uh, at least 40 days from acute uh, myocardial infarction uh, to prevent sudden death and prolonged life. Um, uh, so this is in asymptomatic patients. The cutoff is 30 degrees, uh, 30%. Uh, in patients with uh, symptomatic heart failure, um, uh, the number, as we saw before, is 35%. So these are symptomatic patients, and the conditions are, um, again, secondary prevention, as we, as we uh, said, and the primary prevention, uh, ICD is recommended to reduce risk of sudden death and all-cause mortality in patients uh, with symptomatic heart failure, uh, two to three. Uh, um, here, uh, there is no uh, plus four. Sometimes it is... Um, uh, plus four, if we are waiting uh, uh, transplantation or waiting assist device uh, therapy, but uh, all the studies that, uh, that, um, uh, that uh, support the evidence here are two to three, uh, in contrast to the CRT, which is two, uh, three, two, uh, three uh, or ambulatory class four. Uh, um, despite uh, three or more months of uh, optimal medical therapy, um, uh, and this is important because sometimes patients improve on optimal medical therapy and ejection fraction increase after three months. So it's important to, um, uh, to repeat the echo uh, after uh, this period to uh, judge uh, the need for device therapy. Uh, and uh, both uh, ischemic and non-ischemic, again, is class one uh, indication. Um, uh, and this is... Uh, uh, um, uh, in the in the first uh, period of the myocardial um, infarction, if uh, if a sudden cardiac death is feared, we can uh, use the variable ICD. I'll talk a bit about it later. Um, uh, in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, there is a risk score for uh, uh, for um, uh, for primary prevention. I will not talk about secondary prevention because it is, uh, it is, it is the same in all uh, disease. I talk about the primary prevention. And here, um, here are the, the risk variables. We depend on history, um, uh, uh, the uh, ECHO and the 48-hour uh, uh, halter. And these are parameters that uh, were uh, associated with um, uh, mortality. Uh, it is a uh, study that uh, conducted this score. It, it studied the five year mortality of patients in this focus and found that these parameters are associated with the uh, uh, highest odds for, uh, of death. So, this is a uh, family history of sudden cardiac death, age, time, experience in hope. Um, for this, from history, the echo parameters, the left ventricular outflow gradient. The maximum left ventricular wall thickness, the left atrial uh, diameter, and uh, non sustained ventricular tachycardia uh, in the uh, holter, the 48 hour holters, and uh, a risk score was calculated. Um, uh, that's uh, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy risk, uh, sudden cardiac death score. Uh, uh, and uh, here's a cutoff, and four and six. If, uh, if six or more, this is a high risk of uh, five-year uh, mortality, uh, and uh, ICD should be considered uh, if between uh, four uh, um, and six, it may be considered plus class 2B, and if low uh, risk, uh, less than four, uh, generally not indicated, but sometimes indicated if um, here uh, ICD implantation be considered in uh, individual patient who is uh, less uh, than 4% per, uh, percent, uh, risk, but uh, they have clinical features of proven prognostic importance, um, and um, uh, the impact of ICD uh, uh, suggests a uh, net benefit that uh, uh, the benefit outweigh the risk, and it's contraindicated 
uh, uh, class C if the patients, um, uh, the risk score is less than 4%. Uh, percent. Um, and uh, uh, I talk about two studies. Uh, that uh, was the first study uh, that um, uh, uh, showed that there is some benefit from uh, ICD therapy. So this was the first study in uh, 2000. Um, it was uh, called the median implantable defibrillator study. Our CD study a randomized uh, trial of the implantable cardioverter defibrillator against amidarone. Uh, amidarone was uh, the gold standard uh, for, for prevention um, of, um, of uh, the, this particular uh, arrhythmias and sudden death. And um, here the arrhythmia, the patient characteristics, uh, around 50% of patients had uh, VA for sudden cardiac arrest. So they are all uh, this high risk population. And uh, they had, again, some ischemic, uh, uh, most of them were ischemic, these patients. Um, and uh, they, they uh, beside amiodarone and ICD therapy, they uh, sometimes had uh, other uh, uh, ischemic therapy, uh, therapies. And uh, what they found, uh, um, amiodarone uh, compared to the ICD, uh, that um, here the arrhythmic death was uh, was less. Uh, they didn't differ. Um, this is a couple of my curve uh, um, from death from any cause um, between amiodarone and ICD, and um, uh, there was no. Um, uh, uh, the, here, the, uh, the ICD was better, but is, it didn't reach statistical significance in this early study. Uh, but uh, the arrhythmic mortality uh, um, uh, was, uh, was better in the, um, for the ICD. And the conclusions um, were that uh, a 20% relative risk reduction occurred in all cause mortality. So we have two, two uh, the mortality, the all-cause all mortality or and the arrhythmic mortality. The arrhythmic mortality was high, uh, benefit from ICD, and uh, 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 this study uh, showed the early benefit of the defibrillator therapy. And the other study uh, was the uh, CARE study, the cardiac arrest study in Hamburg, uh, done in Germany, and uh, the mice comparison of anti-arrhythmic uh, drug therapy is implantable defibrillator in patients resuscitated from cardiac arrest. Uh, this is done in 2000. And um, here patients were uh, having coronary artery disease, again, the majority. Um, they had um, uh, the left ventricular ejection fraction around 40%. 40 and all were, uh, uh, most of them were, again, survivors from sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, and uh, here, uh, three groups were, done, were uh, compared, uh, defibrillator uh, uh, group, amiodarone group, and metoprolol group, uh, in addition to other uh, uh, therapy for, for our fear. Uh, and um, uh, um, for uh, comparison of ICD for both uh, uh, groups for military therapy uh, indicates um, that ICD, there is benefit for ICD. Again, it was better, but not, uh, but didn't reach significance. Uh, but uh, for uh, 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 long term survival of sudden death, uh, this was better between uh, the uh, between the ICD and um, the medical treatment group, and they conclude that during a long-term follow-up of, of cardiac arrest survivors, therapy with an ICD, the CD is 23% reduction of all-cause mortality uh, when compared to amidarone uh, metoprolol. Um, and this, um, uh, again, uh, was either from the early trial, uh, and later trials uh, uh, proved statistical significance in improving in sudden uh, death compared to medical therapy. Uh, I'll talk about some entities of uh, ICD, the subcutaneous uh, ICD. Uh, it's uh, um, um, 
subcutaneous, subcutaneous lead, uh, retrosternal lead is implanted, and a, uh, um, a ICD system is uh, tracked uh, uh, in the lateral chest wall. Uh, it, uh, it, it has the same effect of uh, delivering therapy, uh, the shocks, but, um, uh, but with no bradycardia pacing, so it uh, should be considered an alternative to transvenous defibrillator in patients with an indication for ICD when pacing uh, therapy for bradycardia support, uh, CRP or anti uh, or ATP was not needed. So bradycardia support or CRT or, or ATP is not needed. Uh, and uh, Again, it may be an alternative. Venous access is difficult. Um, and again, uh, after infections or in younger patients. So these are uh, useful uh, indications for uh, subcutaneous ICD. Uh, the venous access, uh, the infections, and uh, young uh, patients uh, requiring ICD. And the wearable uh, uh, cardiovascular ICD uh, is important. Uh, it is useful as a bridge uh, before transplantation, as a bridge uh, in, cardio in myocarditis, acute myocarditis, in, in preparing for myocarditis. Uh, sometimes more, most patients resolve uh, after uh, six months. So it's, it's a bridge. Uh, uh, to improvement or, or to therapy of the patient. Um, public access defibrillation, defibrillation this uh, public access defibrillation uh, must be established at sites where cardiac arrest is relatively common, like schools, uh, sports stadium, large stations, um, and uh, this, uh, um, uh, 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 again, uh, trains and closed like uh, transportation. It's important um, to, to decrease sudden death, and these are measures done by the uh, society or by, by, uh, by uh, the uh, government. And uh, here, uh, the uh, um, Uh, um, patients in, with acute coronary syndrome, uh, as we said, uh, 40, uh, during 40 days uh, after myocardial infarction, uh, ICD uh, is not used. Uh, sometimes uh, here in these guidelines, um, uh, uh, ICD implantation is to be, but if uh, the, uh, after uh, certain elements in selected patients like Patients with incomplete vascularization, vascularization can be done. Pre-existent left ventricular ejection infection dysfunction. Uh, occurrence of arrhythmia is more than 20, 48 hours after the onset of uh, the syndrome, polymorphic VT or VF. Uh, so these conditions uh, um, is like uh, some are left to critical judgment uh, in the uh, contraindicated period of the 40 days after the MR. Uh, with uh, a temporary use of uh, 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 okay so uh, uh, in uh, uh, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy um, uh, again I will not talk about the secondary prevention this is the primary prevention it should be considered in patients with um, patients that uh, hemodynamic well tolerated VT after balancing uh, the benefits versus risks. So the, uh, it's, if secondary prevention is class one, if primary prevention is only uh, not primary prevention, it's, the SVT is hemodynamically uh, 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 significant, that's class one. If it's well tolerated, this class two. Uh, and um, uh, ICD implantation may be considered if uh, one or more recognized risk factors for ventricular arrhythmias uh, were present uh, in this patient, and um, this is related to the again the history of syncope, the arrhythmia uh, of uh, non stent VT or VT in the hospital, uh, and uh, this is a family history of sudden cardiac death. Uh, again, in infiltrative cardiomyopathies, 
uh, those ICD uh, is implanted in uh, class 2A light uh, chain amyloidosis or hereditary transthyroid and uh, cardiac amyloidosis. Um, uh, this is important cause, um, like in, cardio, uh, micro, uh, in, in, in infiltrative disease, uh, they are rare, but, uh, but this, uh, this is an indication for ICD. Regarding primary asthma syndromes, uh, I talked about the long QT syndrome. And again, um, uh, ICD implantation, uh, in addition to beta blockers, should be considered in long QT syndrome patients who experienced uh, syncope or VT while receiving adequate dose of beta blockers. So, first we try beta blockers uh, if, um, uh, if, if patient had syncope or VT uh, during beta blocker therapy, as yes, uh, ICD should be considered. If hemodynamically unstable, it is class one. Uh, 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 and um, implantation of ICD uh, should be, consi be considered in patients um, in addition to beta blocker therapy in asymptomatic carriers uh, of a pathogenic mutation in uh, potassium channel H2 or potassium channel uh, 5A when uh, QT, uh, corrected QT is more than 500. And uh, this uh, signifies the role of um, uh, gene therapy. Uh, sometimes there, there is uh, pathogenic uh, mutations that, if present, uh, um, it, it can justify implantation of an ICD. Um, and of, of course, if uh, gene therapy is not very common in Egypt, but this is. Um, uh, some, sometimes some genes are uh, uh, like malignant. Uh, this is demonstrated in, in other diseases like Hocum. Uh, this is similar to this condition. In Brugada syndrome, implantation of ICD should be considered in patients with a spontaneous diagnostic, uh, spontaneous, that's not drug induced, diagnostic type 1 uh, ECG pattern, uh, and a history of syncope, this both uh, uh, should be present. Um, and because the type 1 is the most uh, malignant uh, uh, type. And uh, again, uh, ICD implantation may be considered in patients with diagnosed Brugada uh, uh, who develop um, VF during programmed ventricular stimulation uh, with two or three extra stimuli at two sites. And this, um, uh, there's an EP study, the VT study in Brugada syndrome, and this is the only. Uh, uh, this is the primary asthma syndrome that, uh, that we can do with uh, EP study. Other, other, um, uh, other primary asthma syndromes, it's contraindicated to do EP study, it's not useful. But here in Brugal syndrome, we can uh, do it to uh, risk patients for ICD. Okay. Thank you very much.